Monsters were everywhere. They didn't spare people by killing them one by one. They destroyed everything around, destroying skyscrapers at every step, creating complete chaos in the city. Our main character Mang Kao tried his best to fight them, but the strength and numbers were unequal because of this, he lost. One of the monsters reached out and grabbed him so hard that he screamed and then hit the ground hard. Barely restraining himself on his feet, he stubbornly stood his ground. He wanted to fight these monsters. Immediately, another monster stuck its tentacles into him, dealing him a fatal blow. When he was dying, he remembered his parents and said that he tried his best, but he did not accept such a fate. Meteors flew from the sky to the ground, destroying everything around and the city burned to the ground. We will be shuffled to another place in the school classroom where the teacher is trying to explain the topic to the student. An old teacher holding a sword and a skeleton of an animal's head shouted at his students to look at his hands to find out what monsters look like. Suddenly, the student who was sleeping in the very last desk woke up abruptly and wondered what was going on here. The girl sitting at the desk looked at him and asked with a thoughtful look, was he asleep all the time? The guy our main character Meng Kao looked at his hands and realized that he was not dead. Looking to the side, he saw on the blackboard that the final exam would take place in 50 days. He realized that he had died and been reborn during the exams and then noted with annoyance that he would have to take the exams again. The teacher glared angrily with his eyes and said if he sleeps during the lesson, then at least let him not interfere with his classmates. And then Meng Kao said with horror is he dead. Everyone in the class fell silent, looking at him like he was the last idiot. A guy with a thick build and pink hair, looking at him in amazement, gave him a thumbs up. He was thinking how true it turned out that Meng Kao was the most beaten in class 6. The teacher viciously told him to explain himself. Meng Kao, startled by this murderous look, immediately began to explain himself to the teacher. He said he allegedly had a nightmare where creatures from another world broke into Longcheng and everything was destroyed in one moment. And teacher Yan himself also died heroically. Then the teacher's eyes flashed furiously. And he asked, so in his dream the city of Longcheng fell and he himself died. The skeleton of the monster's head immediately cracked under the pressure of the teacher's hand. Remembering how he died, Meng Kao cautiously said that he died quickly and painlessly. The teacher smashed the skeleton to pieces and angrily said how Longcheng could have fallen. This is ridiculous. The teacher angrily shouted for him to go to the wall and stand bent over so that his head was raised and his chest was forward. Meng Kao, looking at the teacher, asked if he had to stand like that, but when he saw the teacher's evil look, he immediately fell silent. The teacher, passing the desks of the students, asked Meng Kao 50 years ago when the city of Longcheng passed into another world and an epidemic and zombies raged there, whether Longcheng fell then. After the zombie disaster, fog descended and zombies invaded the city. They lost a third of the entire population. Countless martyrs bowed their heads to the monsters and begged for their blood. They recaptured every territory, inch by inch from the teeth of the monsters. Leaning towards him, the teacher shouted whether Longcheng had fallen then, whether they had surrendered at that moment. Meng Kao quickly straightened up and replied that the city had not fallen and they had not surrendered either. Turning to the rest of the students, the teacher began to tell them that as soon as the fog cleared, their military quickly and decisively shed the radiance of earthly civilization on the whole other world. How could a city like Longcheng be overpowered by some insignificant foreign creatures that were ferocious? And looking at Meng Kao viciously said that it was they, the earthlings, who were the most ferocious. To which all the students began to approve of his words, saying that sooner or later they would destroy the other world. One of the students stood up and praised the teacher's words. He was neatly dressed and wore glasses. He began to say that they should all train hard, try to become outstanding people and contribute to the development of Longcheng. You can't just sit and be afraid all day, thinking about the destruction of Longcheng. Looking sideways at Meng Kao, he sarcastically said that unlike some cowardly people, most classmates have the same opinion, and everyone said in unison that Longcheng would win. All the girls admiringly praised the headman, saying how good he was and at the same time disdainfully treated Meng Kao, saying what a loser he was living in damage, that he's the worst in the class. Meng Kao did not understand why the headman was so picky, but then he remembered that they were enemies and in a previous life he had missed the final exam because he had inflicted internal damage on Meng Kao. And besides, when Longcheng clashed with the other world, the headman betrayed Longcheng and moved towards foreigners. Meng Kao looked at him and abruptly took a step. The headman looked at him and wondered inside what was wrong with his gaze. He looked strange. Tall grinned and began to praise the headman for the way his speech touched his heart that he already wanted to study more. And he said that thanks to teacher Jan and the headman, he realized his mistake. And from now on, he will stand firm and persevere in order to elevate Longcheng's city in front of foreigners. The teacher barked that he had finally come to his senses and he should study with Zuo Heijang, and ordered him to demonstrate the blow of the hidden dragon and stand there until the end of the lesson. That chubby guy looked at him uncomprehendingly why Meng Kao is not serious about punishments.
since this is a very difficult technique and it will be very difficult to hold out like this even until half of the lesson. Mang Keo scratched his head and said that the blow of the hidden dragon was not so difficult for him, but he did not use this blow in his nightmare. Upon hearing this, his classmates mocked him, telling him not to show off, it's better to beg for mercy. One of them said that Teacher Yang was cruel in punishments, but now it seems to him that this punishment is not enough. The headman grinned and said that he had run into it himself. Meng Kao, having got into the right position, immediately showed them his hidden dragon strike. Everyone was shocked because his blow turned out to be powerful and even stronger than the headman's. They didn't understand how he did it. Meng Kao pathetically started babbling that he hadn't trained for a while and his movements might not be perfect, and he promised that he would try harder in the future and asked for forgiveness. The teacher turned around and said that the lesson was continuing. Everyone said that after his dream, Meng Kao began to show off more and his strength increased. The headman was furious and promised himself that he would make him regret that he had put him in an awkward position. Then Meng Kao's eyes lit up yellow and digital codes began to appear in front of his eyes, and a sign appeared where it was written that the spark completes the binding and confirmation of the owner's identity. The bearer of fire is Meng Kao. Meng Kao recalled his past life. When he was dying and Longcheng was collapsing, a large fireball came out from the center of the city and directly crashed into his body. Meng Kao thought it was his nightmare, but it turned out it wasn't. While he was standing in the lying dragon pose, signs appeared in front of him where it says that he is now the bearer of the fire of civilization, and the initial reward is 10000k of contribution. Meng Kao has been found to have old hidden injuries and does not possess any basic knowledge. Does he want to distribute his initial contribution reward to improve to an optimal state? After he agreed, his injuries and wounds began to heal and are being treated. Many doctors have been helpless in treating hidden injuries sustained due to a mistake during the improvement last year. Meng Kao felt that his torn muscles and tendons were fusing together. 3,500 contribution points were used to study the basic power technique primitive bull method to the expert level. Meng Kao was delighted that the memory of the primitive bull method technique from his previous life had returned, and then the signs disappeared. Meng Kao turned to sincerely to continue the process and said that he could spend as many contribution points as he wanted. But then he realized that it was all worth 10,000 seconds. Then he suggested that if Isker helped raise the primitive bull method to the level of a master, then he would give him an eye. He refused and the sign said that the fire of civilization grows with the carrier. The stronger the civilization, the stronger the fire carrier and Meng Kao must contribute to the development of his civilization as soon as possible and unlock new powers and missions. Meng Kao wondered why he hadn't been told how. Meng Kao could stand until the end of the lesson. The teacher looked at him and, putting away his things, said that the lesson was over. All the classmates are shocked that he could stand until the end of the lesson and one of them said that standing on one leg is very useful for hardening Jing Kai and Shen. The term from Taoism Jing is the bodily essence of Kai the life force, Shen the spirit. Meng Kao began to feel weak. He really wanted to eat and wondered if he himself would have to replenish the energy that Iskra spent on treatment and learning skills. Then that chubby guy ran up to him and rushed at him. He was his best friend and his name was Chu Faisen. He asked how Meng Kao managed to practice the lying dragon stance. Meng Kao called him by putting his hand on his shoulder and asked him to take the buffet to eat. And tomorrow and the day after tomorrow he will treat him. In his defense, he said that he had forgotten the money. Faisen threw his hand off his shoulder and said that when he became so generous, he wasn't like that. To which Meng Kao replied how can he deceive him because they are like brothers. Shu Faisen was delighted to hear these words and they went to the buffet. Meng Kao ate so much that there was a mountain of packing noodles left of him. After he ate the ramen, he started on the chocolate. This sight made his friend so furious that he wanted to hit him, since Meng Kao had spent his two-week budget. Then Meng Kao's eyes lit up and he could react faster and hit Chu in the face. He flew several meters away and began to cry, saying that some kind of demon ran to class. Walking along the sidewalk, Meng Kao saw bottles and cans. A cleaner worked not far from him, saying that again the students scattered their garbage everywhere. Saying that he would help him, Meng Kao began to collect the bottle in a dumpster, and for helping a person develop the spirit of justice of Longchang City. He received 0.001 contribution points. For taking care of the environment, I received the same contribution point, to which Meng Kao thought that it turns out to be easier than he thought. When he entered the building, Chu Faisen told him to hurry up so as not to be late for class. Then two girls walked past Meng Kao going up the stairs, involuntarily. Meng Kao stared at them and received a shelbin from Chu for this. He indignantly said you can't stare at people like that. To which Meng Kao replied melancholically that he had only just realized this ordinary life. She is worth doing everything to protect her. Chu looked after them and replied that he admired Meng Kao, saying that he was both so shameless and so refined. 
And then Chu came to his senses and told him to stop staring and tell him better how he really arranged the death of Teacher Yang and the fall of Longcheng. And then he smiled dreamily and asked if he had become a general in his dream, to which Meng Kao was indignant, saying he only saw fragments and did not arrange a massacre. When he wanted to say something about Chu himself, he stumbled and he remembered that he was just a soldier on the front line. And it began to be unrealistic to tell that the War of Monsters quickly moved to a higher level and many fierce monsters appeared. And he annoyingly noted that they did not even have time to leave the initial location when the end of Longcheng was already predetermined. The initial location is like an MMORPG games where beginners start from. Then Meng Kao remembered about his parents. But looking at his friend, he asked if he remembered that once Meng Kao dreamed of joining a university and becoming an extraordinary person, and he himself wanted to go to a military school and become a general. He bought it by the shoulders and said they talked about it yesterday as it was once upon a time. Meng Kao hugged him and said that their dreams would definitely come true. Shu said if Meng Kao wants to go to university, they should prepare well in these 50 days and he will help him with this, to which Meng Kao thought, or else he would help him, since he had experienced a lot in his previous life, and yet they believed that they would go where they wanted to go. All the students started to gather in the classroom and their lesson was Chinese and literature. Some girls started discussing that they would really like to learn the Song of Mulan and Lotus Pond under the moonlight and they couldn't wait to learn faster and said that they really missed Teacher Huang Chinese teacher. It was not Teacher Huang who entered the classroom, but the headman, informing them that the teacher was ill and ordered everyone to line up and follow him to the training hall. To which all the students were outraged, but still went to the training hall. While they were all walking to the training room, Chu talked to Meng Kao about how children of their own age used to have 20 books of literature a week and added that those times were very cool. To which Meng replied that he could hide the book and read for his own pleasure when he was free from training. The headman turned to them and seeing them chatting, shouted at them to go faster. Chu Faisen was infuriated by this and said that he didn't like that this guy was pretending to be the most important person here. And he lowered his voice and asked Meng if he knew why this guy didn't go to the rocket class and decided to stay as a prefect in their regular class. And he replied that he stayed because the school gives the elders resources for improvement. His family has their own company, so he also takes away resources from such poor bastards like them. Meng Kao thoughtfully agreed and said if the headman, Zhuo Heizhang, had not used his uncle's connections to stay in an ordinary classroom, then Faisen himself would have been the headman. The headman looked at them angrily and immediately shouted at them to stop talking and go faster, at which Chu got very angry and wanted to throw his fists. But Meng Kao stopped him saying they needed to practice first. They entered the training room where everything was beautifully equipped. There were almost all the necessary things for training. The headman said that it was an independent lesson and everyone chooses the area of improvement and trains themselves. Meng Kao chose a boxing simulator and threw a punch, but his punch wasn't powerful because he was still hungry. To heal the hidden injuries, the spark swallowed all the energy. The spark helped him restore his body and awaken his skills, but it can't give him strength. Meng Kao felt like a tank without fuel, and to fill the tank would require a lot of resources to improve. His classmates were watching him from the other end of the training hall. One of them said it was a pity that Meng Kao had wanted to become extraordinary before. The headman, lifting the barbells, looked at Meng Kao and told him if he was not training, then let him leave here. And I freed up the inventory for the hard-working guys. To which Chu said that he had not trained for a long time and needed to recover, and taking him with them, they went to another training ground. While Meng Kao was sitting, Chu was training on a boxing bag and told Meng Kao that he had not improved for a whole year and probably even forgot such a basic technique as bull power. Following his training, Meng Kao looked at his friend funny. The same indignant man said that he thought that he was not training well. Because Meng Kao said with a wise look that this is not how power is done. Chu pouted and said they are brothers, and Meng Kao is trying to show off in front of him. Meng Kao with tired eyes told him not to be offended, but those methods for using force are not very good. To which Chu was even more offended by telling Meng Kao how unscrupulous he was. Then Meng Kao suggested that he go to the toilet. They went to the toilet and after making sure that no one was there, Meng Kao closed the door. When Chu asked what he was going to do, Meng Kao smiled slyly and told him to take off his clothes and let him explore his muscles. Chu was horrified and asked what he was going to do and said that he would resist if he did not defeat him. Meng Kao looked at him wearily and asked if he had just used the bull power technique. Did he have a feeling that the power was about to leak out? Chu looked at him dumbfounded, and squatting down, he looked at his knees and asked if he felt a tingling sensation from his feet to his knees when he stepped on the floor. Chu asked in surprise how he knew, to which Meng Kao said that he did not have the innermost meaning of the power of the bull and half of his strength simply got drunk into the body. And he added a little gloatingly if he continues at this pace, he can easily earn himself osteoporosis. Chu here hugged his legs and crying told him to save him. 
Meng Kao told him to use his power and he would watch. And immediately, his eyes lit up with a golden spark. After some time, they came out of the toilet. Chu's eyes shone with happiness and he told Meng Kao that thanks to his manipulation, he increased his impact force to 3%. Meng Kao smiled and said to take the test and find out how much his strength had increased. Then a sparkle sign appeared in front of Meng Kao's eyes and it was written there. For instructing a simple citizen Chu Faisen about the basic skill bowl power, the training progress is 10%. And for the fact that Meng Kao helped ordinary citizens become stronger and increase the level of combat effectiveness of the city of Longcheng, he received plus 10 contribution points. Meng Kao was surprised to note that if he teaches ordinary citizens the skills that I gave him from Iskra, then he gets contribution points for it. And he thought that if he taught all ordinary citizens combat skills in the future, he could make them 100 times stronger than in his nightmare. And when the time comes, they will show these foreigners who is strong here. And I realized the meaning of the word the stronger the civilization, the stronger the carrier. And for the fact that he contributed to civilization, awards were given which he should choose one of them. The first reward is to upgrade the skill primitive bull method from the expert level to the master level. The second reward is to awaken the skill basic shooting. The third reward is to awaken the power of pulsation. Ben Kao was a little in a stupor, not knowing what to choose, and then he chose the awakening of the basic shooting skill, which was the most expensive among these three skills. Smiling slyly, Men Kao said to himself, if all this is free, why not choose the most expensive skill? And still smiling, she told Faison that he would send him to military school. His smile scared Faison a little. They approached the device with which they could measure their strength and find out how much it had increased. Shu asked Men Kao how he learned such strange techniques to which he said he would tell about it later and told him to first check his ultimate impact force. And he gathered strength into his fist just wanted to hit him suddenly someone called out to him to stop. It was the headman. He adjusted his glasses and said he and Meng Kao left the lesson and after 20 minutes returned he decided to measure his impact force. And looking at him menacingly, he asked who allowed him to do this. Chu was indignant and told the headman why he fancied himself a teacher. He had just had an epiphany of the son of the bull. Even a teacher wouldn't stop him and why is he interfering? The headman grinned nastily and said that he had seen his performance of the power of the bull and it was crooked and he was still far from the standard the power of the bull technique. And if he really wanted to use the impact force meter, he said he had to step aside and go work on the technique. Chu Faisen wanted to attack him out of anger, but Mayor Kao held him back and asked the headman if so, maybe he himself would show them his standard performance of the bull power technique so that everyone could learn a good lesson. Taking off his watch, he said that he would show them what the real bull power was and hit the meter. The device staggered a little from the impact. The meter showed 225 kilograms. All the girls admiringly began to squeak how strong he was that he broke the record of their class with the first blow. He is developing so fast that he will be able to enter the best university. And even if he is smaller than Faison, his impact force is 5 kilograms more. The headman grinned nastily and asked if they understood. Chu Faison was furious. But one classmate told him to wait a bit and they would measure together and turn to Meng Kao to convince him. But he patted his shoulder and gave the go-ahead. But the headman shielded him with his hand, telling him to check with everyone else after the lesson. They started quarreling and Chu grabbed his hand and told him to let go. Because of his anger, he looked like an angry polar bear. The headman was a little confused where he got so much strength from. Chu threw him aside, gathering all his strength into a fist and hit the meter with such force that the headman was shocked by the strong wind of the blow. And even the legs of the meter rose from the ground from the impact. The impact force of Chu Faisen was 785 kilograms. Everyone was stunned. His score surpassed that of the prefect and he set a new record for their class. Meng Kao got enough of it and started saying what kind of sneaky guy he was that secretly trained the bull superpower technique. Everyone was confused by the word bull superpower. Meng Kao continued to say that the teachers of the reception of the superpower of the bull cannot be hired for any money. But an increase in the force of impact by 10 kilograms. It's like plus 10 points as a result of the final exam and innocently asked if Chu would teach him the superpower of the bull. Chu Faisen was at a loss as he had taught him this technique himself. Meng Kao said that he understands him because time is not so much and there are still a couple of weeks left before the exam, and offered him if he would teach him, he would pay him with his resources for improvement. And then Chu Faisen realized that Meng Kao wanted to make money, and had to play along with him, and already all their classmates wanted to study with him. And Meng Kao suggested to everyone why don't they unite and maybe they will create a training group bull superpower and everything will work out to pay for his services. Many agreed and started joining the group. The headman was furious. Then a sign appeared in front of Meng Kao. It was written there that his proposal promotes class cohesion. Now his classmates can be more motivated to study and they will have a better chance of getting good scores on the final exam. In the future, they will be able to make a great contribution to civilization. 
and for that, he received 11 points of contribution. Meng Kao began to praise Chu Faisen for how good and selfless he is, besides being very strong, and he also takes his studies seriously. Why didn't the teacher choose him as a prefect? She looked at the headman, who was still sitting on the floor, in confusion. He glared at Meng Kao, but he gave him his hand and said that he just said it was nothing serious. But the headman already wished him dead inside. He declined his hand. He stood up himself and said that how could he think about such a thing because the headman is trying for all of us. The headman assured himself that he would definitely not let Meng Kao go to university. Meng Kao and Chu Faisen climbed onto the roof of the school. They shared the resources they had gained through mentoring. Chu said that he could take everything since he had been devastated for a whole year, to which Meng Kao said that it was better to share 70 by 30. After taking his share, Chu asked where he learned that technique from, to which Meng Kao lied, saying that he had found a forum on the darknet dedicated to the science of life. This time I carefully studied everything about the reception of the superpower of the bull. He couldn't tell me about the spark yet. Life science includes biology, immunology, genetics, physiology, ecology, etc. And he added if he is worried about the danger of admission, then you can tell classmates that the superpower of the bull is a type of beta version and that of course there may be bugs, but they cannot participate if they do not want to. And Meng said that he just wanted to contribute and there was no need to force anyone. Chu said that he would tell them so, ran to the exit and left. Meng Kao collected his briefcase and looked at the landscape of the city. The city was large, beautiful and multifaceted. Meng Kao began to reflect that he had not liked the fog before because the fog sealed the city and prevented the earthlings from killing enemies. He also dislikes the city of Longcheng itself. Cramped neighborhoods, crowded streets, and the improvement requirements are too strict, and he noted that he was the same as all teenagers. I've watched too many movies and books about the old earth, where students attend only two physics lessons, and several dozen in mathematics literature. And for adults, it was enough to work only eight hours a day to earn enough money for a large apartment and environmentally friendly food. And then his eyes watered. That land is now the homeland that cannot be returned, and the nightmare is tomorrow that has not yet come. And in front of him now is his only home. And then the sign came out again and Meng Kao began to receive contribution points for the fact that the primitive bull method is spreading among the residents of the city. And then Meng Kao realized that even the indirect spread of progress also affects his contribution. He was pleased that he could be useful. Then they turned to the citizens. Through large flying ships, they turned to the citizens informing them that the latest news was from the Municipal Meteorological Bureau. Fog is expected tonight and monsters will enter the city. According to their forecast, the main area for the appearance of monsters will be the area of the Chengbei Metallurgical Plant. The Committee for Survival orders the Steel Dragon Corruption to immediately put on a Level 1 alert. The rest of the districts are ordered to put on a Level 3 alert. And they asked the citizens to follow the rules and be vigilant and ready to fight the enemy. People were crowding the streets. Meng Kao ran after the bus and barely managed to get on it. The headman saw this and grinned, calling him trash. He was sitting in his car. The bus stopped at the Hulin district stop and Meng Kao could barely get off the bus. When he entered his neighborhood where vendors were selling their wares to attract the attention of customers, he thought when, after his resurrection, he walked through this dilapidated market again, what he was thinking about were fond memories. Hearing those warm and familiar voices, he only felt calm. Watching the people in the market, he thought how much life is in full swing here. But suddenly his sister called him, asking for help so that he could help him lift a bucket full of crabs. He looked at her and smiled warmly and wanted to say her name. But then he suddenly remembered his past life. In his nightmare, she was the witch of the dark night. Wherever she goes, she will bring with her only endless dark nights. In his vision, she was all in black and pressing her foot on his face. But then her sister brought him out of his thoughts, asking if he was okay. And she added, he looks like a mouse saw a cat in front of him. Meng Kao looked at her suspiciously and thought that he did not know that his sister was this type. And then, forcing a smile, he grabbed her by the shoulders and asked Zio Kao if she had the strength, she would crush him. To which she innocently smiled and protested why he was asking such questions, she would not do such cruel things. But inside, she cunningly thought that if she had the strength, she would trample on him. Meng Kao thought that there must be a reason why she became a witch of the dark night. And I asked her if she was upset or dissatisfied with something about him, to which she innocently denied. But inside she was angry at her brother and called him bad. Then, outraged, she asked what she had provoked him with and he was still insulting her. To which Meng Kao slightly ruffled her hair and said does a brother need some reason to hurt his little sister a little. Inside himself, he thought when she became the witch of the dark night, she immediately stepped on him. And now that he's stronger, he's going to have a little fun. But then he took it seriously for himself that since he had returned from that nightmare, in this life he would no longer allow her to become a terrifying witch of the dark night, and he made a promise to himself that he would make her the happiest and most beloved princess in the world. While they were walking home, they argued and quarreled a little. 
Xiao Kao indignantly shouted that she hated her brother, to which Meng Kao teased her by saying that he liked it when she hated him. Xiao Kao said that at that time, as compensation, she demanded the meat of an armored Lethorg from Meng Kao or she would tell her father, to which Meng Kao said that he knew his sister was worried about him, but he could carry him himself, which made her even more angry. When Xiao Kao came home, he immediately began to complain about his mother, saying that her brother was hurting her. Meng Kao greeted his mother. She smiled and turned to her daughter, saying that she constantly criticizes her brother. And holding an egg roll on one hand, she told them to eat soon. Then Meng Kao's eyes lit up and he reached out his hand and took one of the rolls. When he was eating a roll, he burst into tears. Mom was a little confused asking why he was crying. And his sister teased him and said that he just went crazy. And then, opening the door, their father entered the house and said why there was a noise that he had already heard Xiao Kao complaining about his brother from the street. And he added that she would turn on the TV and watch it until the broadcast from the battlefield began there. Immediately, military armed tanks similar to crabs were shown on TV. It is reported that at 8.50 am, the military group of assault combat crabs completes the deployment of a position in the north of the city. These iron crabs are the latest military development of their city. And Professor Qi Zhengdong from the biology department of Longcheng University was invited to the show. And they asked him why exactly crustacean machines. He explained that the last three times when the fog descended, the main forces of the invasion were crustacean monsters. And Xiao Kao switched to another channel out of boredom. There she saw a dark silhouette of a man jumping over the roofs of a glass building. She immediately recognized him, saying that it was Longcheng number one. She was so stuck that her parents said she was so obsessed with Master Liu Wu. But then the shaking turned off the TV and all the things in the house began to shake. Meng Kao said they were monsters. Through the emergency sirens, it was heard that the Tong Faiyuan area was going into fortress mode. And then bug-like monsters invaded the area. Monsters were attacked by people here. There were a lot of MXS. Then the order was given to raise the barrier, redirect all electricity to the barriers in the high-voltage support tower. And then the device opened and a strong stream of electricity came out of it that it beat off many monsters. Meng Kao was shocked by the number of them. He was watching it through binoculars all the time. He thought that he had drunk all the dietary supplements, but was not sure if he could withstand such a battle. Father War asked the room how the battle was going, to which Meng Kao said nothing special so far. A grandmother with a white dog came up to them, telling them to monitor the situation outside and she and a dog named Zubik would take care of them. The dog, matching his nickname, was happily circling around Meng Kao's mother and sister. Meng Kao looked at his grandmother and said that she would worry about her safety. She pulled his ear for his words and was outraged why he thought she was already very old and couldn't do anything. To which Meng Kao quickly began to apologize to her. But there was an explosion. One of the bug monsters was able to break the equipment that was studying the waves of electricity. And they all began to spread their wings like fiery wings in the color of dark pink. My father noted with fear that this is a kind of black fire beetles flying flame beetles. And the father gave his son a machine gun and took the scoff for himself. Because these bugs are not easy to defeat, you need to get closer and only then attack. It's not going to be easy to get through this evening. They started shooting at them. Meng Sao's father said it was very difficult for them to get in, so they should only hope for luck. Meng Kao thought if all this drags on, many people may die today. And then a spark appeared in front of him. It said whether he was ready to start his first combat mission. The Insect Exterminator. It was written at the bottom. Black fire bugs 0 divided by 10. Flying flame beetles 0 divided by 3. The reward for completing the mission is 1,500 contribution points and improving the basic skill by one level. And it began. His basic shooting skill has been activated, but then grandma came up to him, holding him by the shoulder and said if he was scared, maybe she would try. But then Ko started shooting at the monsters by performing a triple shot and killed one flying fire bug. For this, he received plus one contribution points. The level of proficiency in the usual skill basic shooting has been increased by 0.8% for a total of 25%. Grandma whispered to him on the head and praised him, saying that he shoots like his uncle when he was still alive. And Meng Kao thought if Grandma hadn't stopped him, he could have blown up this bug with three consecutive shots. And he continued to shoot at the monsters, killing one by one. Meng Kao noted that the feeling of weapons from the past gradually returned. His father looked at him and said that he was better with a machine gun than he was. Meng Kao confusedly said that because he was injured last year, it was difficult to train martial arts. Therefore, he practiced a lot with a gun. His father patted him on the shoulder and said it was hard for him, but then he encouraged him by saying that he should always keep in shape and show them what he's learned. They were shooting at these bug monsters. His father looked at him like that and said that no matter how many problems he had now, he still had to keep an eye on his health. Meng Kao assured him that he was fine. But he noted that something was wrong. Another terrifying monster did not appear. I had to find him. 
and then Meng Kao saw a large, terrifying bug. He was big and it was clear from his appearance that he was the leader of the beetles. This monster bug attacked everything, people destroyed houses. Meng Kao realized that with his current shooting level, he couldn't even injure him. To defeat him, you need at least a master level or even a perfection level. Having taken all the bugs to one place, that monster sent them towards the people. The military people noted that something was wrong with this swarm, and this big bug is behaving very strangely. And all the monsters started attacking people. The military tried to keep them away from the living area. All the military fought the bug monsters en masse. Meng Kao also gained more and more contribution points by killing them. It was necessary to increase the shooting level before the monster fully wakes up. Then the monster opened its wings even more and its wings looked like two big bloodthirsty eyes. The military realized that it was a super monster, and they began to ask for reinforcements, saying that an unknown super monster had been discovered in the Tijunfuan area. But the connection did not work well and was cut off. At that moment, Kao's father told Meng to leave, taking his mother and the others, saying that that big bug could be a super monster. But Meng Kao still shot at the monsters, and then he turned to his father that he should take everyone and run away from here. Meng Kao knew these creatures. That's why I stayed. The big bug monster collected a large fiery heat and directed it at the military. Thick black smoke was flying in the air after the explosion. Because of the smoke, they couldn't properly aim at the monsters, and they all started shooting at the smoke at the same time. But the super monster still came out without any wounds. And then he directed fire rays from himself at his comrades. And then they went even more crazy and started attacking everyone. One of the beetles wanted to attack ordinary citizens. But he was able to get ahead of the warrior who appeared with his sword in his head through the walkie-talkie. He reported that the brigade of swordsmen was ready. It was impossible to allow monsters to get close to residential buildings again. Shouting Long Cheng will win, they began the battle with the monsters. Meng Kao was able to complete his mission at that moment, and for this I received 15 O points of contribution. Iskra asked if one basic skill could be improved by one level right now. But Meng Kao said to wait, adding first he would put all the contribution points into the basic shooting skill and fill the progress scale to failure. Isker showed that the usual skill basic shooting has been mastered by 100%, the level of proficiency has been upgraded to an expert, and the level has risen to master. Meng Kao told Isker to once again improve the master skill basic shooting by one more. Meng Kao was covered by golden rays and his basic shooting skill was mastered to the level of perfection. Now he could see the vulnerabilities of the monsters. The wings of the super monster had golden powder. He can use it to increase the strength of other beetles. And his head shell was an organ full of nerve endings. It was an extremely sensitive place. And having learned his weaknesses, he loaded armor-piercing bullets and only wanted to shoot, but her sister beat him to it, shouting that she had come to help him, and thoughtlessly shot at her little pistol. But she couldn't stand it for a while and fell to the floor. Meng Kao thought with horror that he had forgotten about this gun, and he remembered that as a child. Sayo Kao had assembled this gun herself and asked if it was powerful enough. To which Meng PDF then replied that it was too dangerous and for the time being he would keep it for her own safety. Meng Kao wondered if he hadn't taken her homemade weapon from her back then. Then the super monster turned to him and noticed him, and started flying straight towards him. He could barely dodge while protecting his sister at the same time. The monster left a hole behind and began to destroy their house even more. Meng Kao recalled with horror those memories where his sister in a previous life wanted to help kill a monster, but the shot attracted this terrible demon. Then their mother was seriously injured and went to the hospital, and then a series of misfortunes followed. Zai Okao felt terribly guilty. Maybe that's when the darkness was born in her. Furiously pointing his machine gun at this monster, he thought that this creature had destroyed the house he had lived in for 17 years and hurt his family. Now in this life, he couldn't let it happen again and started shooting at the monster, and one of his shots hit him in the head, which is why his head is a little crushed. The monster was just furious and just wanted to collect a fireball to attack. But Meng Kao managed to shoot him right at his own ball. From such a powerful explosion, the monster died and fell to the ground. The military approached him, checked him and informed him that he had been eliminated. One of them said that Meng Kao's father killed him because he used to serve as a sniper in the army. But he didn't think that he was still as strong. And now they started attacking the rest of the monster bugs. Meng Kao's face was red and his nose was bleeding and he fainted from overwork. His father called out his name. But he was in his thoughts that for many years before the death of this monster, bullets had affected his inner supernatural power, causing a psionic riot. And so he died of his own power. And he was sure that the nightmare could be destroyed, the future could be changed, and his fate was only in his hands. And then her sister ran to him from the pharmacy shouting that he should not die because she had not yet taken revenge on him, ahem, that is, thanked him. And she started crying for his medicine. He opened his eyes and wanted to say something. But Sai Kao beat him to it, 
asking if he was okay and began to painfully hiss his cheeks, and he was yelling at her to take her hands off because he was in pain. Mentally, he thought that she was really a witch of the dark night, pure evil. Grandma came up to them and asked if Ming Kao was okay. He smiled and said that everything was fine, he was just tired. And having already looked at his father, he asked him to tell the others that he killed the super monster and helped him keep his shooting skills a secret. And they all agreed, and his father asked him to rest already in Roy retreats. Meng, lying on the floor, looked around. Everyone was helping each other and were happy that they had survived. Meng Kao was glad that in this life he was able to save everyone. But then he was horrified and jumped up from his seat. After all, he did not receive a notification from Isker that Meng Kao was able to kill a super monster, so the monster could have stayed alive. Meng Kao, despite the pain and fatigue, got up and went to see if the monster was dead or not. His family is a little surprised why he got up. Meng Kao noted that his body is still too weak. The concealment of the injury has not yet fully healed and he himself has not yet developed snonic ability. Even though he now has a perfect shooting level and knows about the weaknesses of the monster. But the connection with the body is not too stable. It takes a lot of time to get used to it. And this shot was made with inaccuracies and as a result did not hit the target exactly. And he thought with horror that his little sister would really become a villain after all. And fate was like a stormy river that a person could not change. When he came to the edge, he saw that the monster slowly began to come to life. Mayor Kao thought he had to change fate. And I just wanted to use the power of the bull to finish him off. But then a bright ray appeared from somewhere and penetrated the monster's head. The monster has definitely been killed now. He was killed by a man in a white cloak with his sword. When they saw him, they all began to call him, saying that the exalted one had come. Signs appeared in front of Meng Kao where it was written that he was able to win five minutes. And the exalted managed to arrive before the super monster caused irreparable damage. And he played a key role in defense and got plus 1978 contribution points for it. And because of his correct approach with Jayakao, the probability that the darkness would consume him decreased by 2%. And the level of chaos in Longcheng city has decreased. And for this I received plus 50 contribution points. Now he can awaken basic skills such as dragon power and the harvest art support skill. An hour later, the military divided the meat of the super monster. One of the mechs said that they should hurry up. Otherwise soon the meat may spoil and may become inedible. Another one shouted to another, telling him to be careful collecting black water because it is very expensive. Meng Kao sat and thought while watching them. After a dose of high energy solution and eating meat cooked by his mother, he was finally able to recover a little. And because he got a lot of things from Iskra, his head still hurt. He noticed that the flaming golden beetle possessed demonic eyes. This means that monsters are constantly evolving and the war is likely to get out of control. Meng Kao had to cherish every minute and become stronger as soon as possible. He understood that now it would not be enough for him to simply master the skills of the perfect level. Now he must constantly practice them in real combat in order to achieve unity between mind and spirit. But he was very puzzled how, without resources to improve, he was constantly terribly hungry, and after killing several bugs, he needed to rest for half a day. How can you fight in a real battle at this pace? And Zio Kao said that there is a harvest of beetles on the street. And Meng Kao remembered that last night his mother was severely injured by a super monster, and he failed the final exam. To earn money for his mother's treatment and for his sister's studies, his father took him with him. He didn't remember how many monsters were killed during the war, but there was enough work for 10 years. And working as a reaper is very profitable. Opening his table, he discovered three skills. 1. Ripple Force 15 O Contribution Points 2. Dragon Power 21 O Contribution Points 3. The Art of Reaping 998 Contribution Points The current number of contribution points was 2,478. Meng Kao was overjoyed that the Art of Harvest turned out to be only 998 pieces. And since he has been doing this for 10 years in his previous life, awakening and raising the level may not be too expensive. Meng Kao told Spark to exchange contribution points for the initial harvest art. It included the method of harvesting insect monsters, mammalian monsters, earth-like monsters and reptilian monsters, and he chose to upgrade the initial harvest art to the expert level. Meng Kao noted that the initial harvest art of the expert level and the basic shooting of the perfect, they had created something like a symbiosis and that meant that he had chosen correctly. And he also realized that many of the monsters he remembers from his previous life have not yet had time to evolve. This could mean that when these monsters appear in Longcheng, he can understand them better than anyone. This made him chuckle maliciously, rubbing his hands. The sister was a little perplexed why he was laughing so vulgarly. Did he really have something planned? Meng Kao's father was going to work, saying that he was going to harvest in the northern district. Meng Kao said he wanted to go with him too. He thought that he might not be able to pass the exams well enough to go to university. 
and instead of looking for some odd job, he wanted to become a reaper. His father looked at him and noted that although his shooting skills are very good, his physical form is not very good, about 80%. Because of this, he cannot go to university. Although it was a little dangerous to work as a reaper, it is a common job and it was also possible to awaken one's inner strength in this industry. And he agreed, saying that he would familiarize him with the work. His sister asked him anxiously if he really wanted to be a reaper. Meng Kao rather thought that when he heard that his brother was going to a dangerous job, even the Witch of the Dark Knight was worried. And after all, they are brother and sister, of course they have a connection. But the sister shyly demands her t-shirt and said if he finds delicious monsters, then let him bring some home. Here Meng Kao was outraged because she was not worried about him, but just wanted to eat delicious food. While our heroes were traveling on abandoned missions, Iskra informs us that although monsters are disgusting, their corpses are one of the most important strategic resources for maintaining the state of Longcheng. It would be cool to just shoot monsters and turn their bodies into garbage. But such a move would waste ammunition, the lives of soldiers without the slightest benefit, and in less than three minutes five years, Longcheng would have exhausted all resources and starved to death. The exalted ones can kill thousands of monsters with cold steel and thus the corpses remain almost untouched and the resources can be restored. It was not surprising that now the army is only helping in the fight against monsters, and the key role lies with the ascended ones. Everywhere they rode there were corpses of monsters. Meng Kao's father said that working as a soldier is very primitive, but the reaper will not be able to work well if he is not attentive and brave. And he added that Chao should not worry and, looking at his father, slowly studied. He said he wasn't worried. The father incredulously asked how not to worry about what was in their area, and the real battlefield is not the same thing. A thousand monsters, mountains of corpses, rivers of blood, how not to be nervous here. Meng Kao calmly said that he really wasn't worried, but the father still stood his ground. Then Meng Kao gave up and said that he had already wet himself because of the excitement. Iskra informed that the smell of high-level monsters can stimulate the central nervous system of the human body, and beginners who have not been on the field are very likely to lose control of their bladder. And his father shoved him and said that he would tell him a secret so that he would not be embarrassed when he became a reaper for the first time he needed to put on a diaper. Meng Kao looked at his father strangely and said how he would get diapers in the middle of the night. And the father took out some diapers from where and said if the time came, he found a taming place and put them on. And Meng Kao nervously said that he had suddenly changed his mind about becoming a reaper and he was confident that he could pass the exam successfully. Laughing, my father said that was all. They stopped and all got out of the cars. Kao's father informed that Shen, the head of the firm, would decide whether he could become a reaper or not. Putting on masks, told him to show modesty. A fat man with special clothes and a mask was sitting in the office. He was the CEO of the Jix and Resource Recovery Company, full name Shen Rongfa. The director looked at them and asked Meng's father if this was his son, to which Meng Kao's father told him that he had talked about him. He took off his mask and grinned nastily and said that Meng Kao had an injury. And because of this, he cannot persuade his brother-in-law. Meng Kao thought about how this fat ass was walking through the doors. Meng Kao's father, holding his hand, said that last year he received a minor injury, but it no longer hinders him. And he said that he himself would be responsible for him in less than two years. Meng Kao would become a good employee. And I asked him for help. Then Meng Kao saw the card between their hands. And he realized that it was a consumer card Golden Dragon shopping center in the balance of such a card at least 10,000 yuan. And he didn't understand, so his father had a lot of money. He can turn this fat director and return the card to his father. Shen Rongfa took the card, grinned maliciously and agreed. Having said that his team is simply attached to the company. And who he takes as an assistant there has nothing to do with the company. And he gloatingly added that it was not worth causing problems for him and his brother-in-law. The father said with fear that there would be no problems. And he told Meng Kao to thank him. Meng Kao bowed and thanked him. The director waved his hand at them, said that it was not worth it and ordered them to get to work faster. Meng Kao was still thinking about money and noted that his father might have large reserves, and it seemed to him that this fat director Shen Rongwa was even more disgusting than Zuo Heichai. Meng Kao's father said that the director should not be contradicted, and then Mayor Kao remembered that the director had beaten his father in a previous life. Meng Kao asked his father why he did not open his own company because he has been working as a reaper for 10 years. Everyone listens to him. Why is he still working for Jackson? He said that it was not so easy to open his own company. And even more so he did not have the finances to start. And besides, there are no those who supplied the corpses of monsters. And patting his son on the shoulder. He said in two years, when he gets used to it here and his sister goes to university, then they can think about it. And then Meng Kao asked if he ever thought that there could be even more monsters. Meng Kao's father didn't understand what he was getting at. He replied that a freelance teacher had recently appeared at the school. 
According to him, monsters will soon begin to evolve and appear even more fiercely in front of them. Even today, a super monster has appeared in their neighborhood. It's a new threat, but it's also a chance. If they want to get rich and rewrite their destiny, then they should take this chance. His father was a little perplexed and said that they would talk about it later and now he needed to get to work. Then Kao thought that if he returned from a nightmare, then he should fix everything and should not continue to live a worthless life. He assured himself that he would become strong and make himself. They entered a building where there were a bunch of monster corpses, and our staff worked tirelessly. The father jokingly asked if he was wearing diapers tightly. Meng Kao did not respond to this. Meng Kao's father approached one of the monsters, took it by the tail and said that today they work with crustaceans, but mainly with yellow-striped scorpions. And all the staff started teasing him saying that he hadn't seen so many monsters before, it was exciting. They told him to touch these monsters, they tease him, maybe he's afraid of them that they might bite him or something like that. To which Meng Kao stony face said thank you. After putting one monster on the table with the help of technology, Kao's father said that they would work slowly so that Meng Kao could study everything carefully. I slaughtered one of his limbs, took out the meat and informed him that tender meat was there. The shell can be reinforced and alloyed. Slime is an excellent fertilizer for the soil and excellent food for earthworms. Its venom can purify medicines and activate the exalted power embedded deep in the genes. The sting is extremely hard and it is used for sniper projectiles. It also has a corrosive and highly toxic effect. And he added that they are not expensive. Even if he breaks them, they can be easily fixed. Meng Kao took the tools from his father, took out a metal thing, began to tear apart the monster's raft and took out a thing similar to a threat. Iskra informs that after the main nerve cord is disconnected, it must be placed in a 37% solution of active neurocellular substances to maintain freshness. Meng Kao put it inside the jar and continued his work. With the help of the 34 hash butterfly scalpel, he was able to separate the meat from the shell. This scalpel has the right thickness to perfectly separate the meat from the shell. And a suction device with negative pressure will help to easily collect and store scorpion meat. And in the end, you need to use a vacuum pump to collect valuable mucus. When he finished his work, Isko awarded plus three contribution points for his first resource collection. The level of proficiency in the art of harvest skill has been increased by 1.1%. Meng Kao noted that he was a little unaccustomed since he had not worked for a long time. When he looked at the other side, all the employees, including his father, looked at him with shock. They were very surprised by his skills. Meng Kao scolded himself for being careless and showing his skills too quickly. And to fix the situation, he said he wanted to tell them a secret. And everyone listened to him attentively. And Meng Kao said that since childhood he dreamed of becoming a professional reaper. Every time dad went to work, he secretly avoided training. Especially after that injury last year, he realized that he had a lot of chances to go to university. And he fervently began to talk about how he had strengthened his desire to become a reaper even more, saying that he practiced like a madman. The teachers supported him in his own endeavor and he was able to achieve such high results. He grew up in the reaper's house and inherited his talent in addition to this hard-working craft and that's how he was able to hone his skills. And everyone started praising him that his school number 9 is considered one of the key ones, which is not surprising. They were also now sure that since their boss had such a son, they were in no danger. Meng Kao's father was shocked. And he asked his son why he didn't know that he wanted to become a reaper. Meng Kao confusedly said that he had always admired him and was embarrassed to admit it. His father proudly said that he had always seen how much he admired him. Meng Kao thought that it could be considered that this time it had passed. And the father thought that his son was very smart and capable. But it's a pity that he was so useless and couldn't even help him go to university to become exalted. And he could only help him become a reaper here at the bottom of society. Meng Kao straightened up and told his father that now, having combined theory with practice, he felt something. And they started a new business. And while Meng Kao was working, he found something interesting. The monster had a spherical nerve and the cost was 50,000 plus. Nervous stress costs 20,000 plus. Meng Kao realized that it was a golden ghost. The father asked. He even noticed about the golden ghost, to which Meng Kao quickly rattled off that the biology teacher had told about him. And he told everyone to prepare the hilt number 9, number 14, and 22, blades number 5, 8, and 11, also a crushing hammer and a bone probe. In addition, he still needs a cooling stabilizer of 35% concentration with the addition of 1% mithril. And he noted that it is more likely that high-quality materials will be found in this golden ghost and they need to be preserved properly. But the staff told him to leave it to the head of the department. He'll figure it out on his own. Meng Kao forgot about it because the Golden Ghost is a monster with a complex structure and besides, it is almost equal in strength to a super monster. Such monsters are usually handled personally by the head of Gu or Master Hu. 
However, the current condition of this monster was getting worse. And noticing this, Meng Kao said that it was impossible to wait because the globular nerve and nerve cord had been in contact with the air for too long. The blood in the raft can be mounted at any moment. Then the psionic forces will get out of control and the MTSR can literally turn into a time bomb. After sniffing the slug, my father also noticed that the smell was strange. One of the employees said that the damage of materials has nothing to do with them at all. But if they lose part of the harvest of monsters and Master Who finds out, then it will not be sweet for them all. Meng Kao was outraged and thought that he should not allow himself to lose such a valuable monster as the Golden Ghost when his father works for Jixin and his income depends on work productivity. And after telling everyone that he just wanted to start his work, one of the employees stopped him by holding his hand. But Meng Kao's father immediately stopped him saying that he had found the Golden Ghost and if something happened, it was his responsibility. He angrily pushed his hand away and shouted that he had brought a child here and was babysitting him. Kao's father looked at the others and said if anyone else wants to leave, then they can leave, sarcastically saying that they don't want to burden anyone, for which he received a slap on the head from a friend. After hitting him, he was outraged by his speech and they would not leave them alone here to deal with this monster. And everyone else supported his father, saying that if they get rich from the Golden Ghost, then together if something happens, we will answer for it together. Meng Kao looked at them, got motivated and started working, cutting off the raft inside. He took out a yellow ball and shouted to his father to bring a cooling stabilizer. Everyone was shocked that Meng Kao had found the spiritual globular nerve, and his condition was in good condition and still active at least 80% and his quality is just perfect. The father warned Meng Kao, telling him to be careful because the distant globular nerves are still very active and may not withstand strong shaking. Meng Kao looked at the ball carefully, smiled slyly and realized that there was something more valuable there. The workers remembered that Meng Kao had suffered a spinal injury last year and reported that the globular nerve was the best medicine. His father blocked his son's path here, saying that people fought and died for this harvest of monsters. Looking at him with regret, he said that he knows about his injury and knows that he wants to go to university, but he can't help him in any way. Even if they are poor, they should not take someone else's. Meng Kao was surprised by his words as his father did not understand his motives correctly. And turning around, he walked away saying that he was tired and would rest a little. Meng Kao was thinking about how to convince his father to open his own company. But then he heard the howl of some kind of monster. Upon hearing this, Meng Kao realized that it was the cry of a seven-eyed dragon wolf spider and ran towards the sound of screams to collect his jackpot. But when he saw two people in front of him, he hid in front of the spider and realized that he was found before he was. The man with gray hair told his student Zushi that she had recently achieved success in the seven guan solutions and this seven-eyed wolf spider would be an excellent practical task for her. The brunette girl was his granddaughter. Putting on gloves, she said that eight minutes would be enough to split up with him. And taking a knife, she wanted to cut the spider. Meng Kao has been looking after them all this time. Thinking what she's doing, she doesn't know about the peculiarity of this seven-eyed spider. And when she wanted to cut the spider, he shouted not to do it. Both turned to Meng Kao. He greeted the man by introducing himself and making a special gesture with his hand. He said that his family was going to open a resource processing plant. The man thought that this young man knew the etiquette of the reapers, and he said that the priest was worried about this taboo. If he is busy with the etiquette of the reapers then why is he preventing his granddaughter from eating this seven-eyed wolf spider? Meng Kao informed them that this seven-eyed dragon wolf spider was stuck in the evolution process between a first and second level super monster. At this stage, the structure of his body is very fragile and the venomous sacs are thin, like the wings of a cicada. If you touch them, all the materials will be ruined. If you work like this girl, then the whole crap will definitely be destroyed. The girl Zushi looked at his badge on her hand and realized that he was not a real reaper, and it was not surprising that he did not recognize her grandfather Ningxi. The man said that Mio Keo was well trained. Without even looking at him, how could he know that he was in the process of evolution? Meng Kao replied that he had been studying this case for 10 years. He can be considered a seasoned reaper. And what about the seven-eyed wolf spider and the seven-eyed dragon wolf spider? Although these two types are very similar, there are slight differences in the death cry and they are not difficult to distinguish. From such a statement, the man was a little confused. The girl flushed with anger, saying who is he trying to intimidate here? Why, if her grandfather didn't hear anything, then some intern, how could he hear? Meng Kao began to justify himself by saying that his words were true. Although outwardly this monster looks like a seven-eyed wolf spider, but the internal organs have already begun to mutate. And he added that if they don't believe him, they can take off his shell and make sure of it. The grandfather narrowed his eyes in disbelief and told his granddaughter to let him see. The girl angrily thought that her aunt had sent him on purpose to stop her. And taking up his weapon, Meng Kao said if he wants to work properly, then let him look carefully. And Meng Kao said he was ready. 
When he cut the shell, his hands trembled a little. Looking at this, Meng Kao realized that he was traumatized and therefore he wanted to do this. And with a sly twinkle in his eyes, he thought that here he was his first jackpot. Approaching the girl, he turned to her and asked if she had 300,000 in cash in her account. The girls crossed their arms and asked him why. He replied that it was obvious that Grandfather Ning had problems with the nervous system, and they definitely need help to complete this harvest. Otherwise, they will only be able to collect material for about 300,000, and if they use his skills and experience, they will at least get perfectly remote bags of poison, and the profit can be increased to 1 million. And flashing his eyes, he said that fate brought them together and he charges only 30,000 for his services. The girl looked at him in confusion for several seconds, then indignantly began to shout that even though her grandfather was old and injured, he was still strong, even if he needed an assistant, then he had her. And they don't need a loser intern like him. Here her grandfather rarely interrupted her, telling her to shut up and come over. He looked at the cut part of the shell with dilated eyes and said that the kid was not lying to them. The girl saw the monster's organs and said that it was not a seven-eyed wolf spider. And her grandfather confirmed it by saying that this is an extremely rare and evolving seven-eyed dragon wolf spider. And inside I thought that I almost failed because of some pathetic level 2 monster. Approaching them from behind, he looked at the monster and wanted to say something. But when the girl glared at him and he immediately fell silent, the girl said if he wanted to say something, then let him not delay. He scratched his head and said that this was an ordinary seven-eyed dragon wolf spider and it didn't have any unusual mutation. It took them by surprise. The girl asked if he could really help her grandfather finish the harvest for 300,000. Meng Kao said 500,000. Grandpa said that if he really helped him and kept the bags of poison at least 70%, but he would give him 500,000. Meng Kao added that he is not exalted, and his powers and perceptions are at an average level so he can be an assistant for him. Inside, Meng Kao breathed a sigh of relief. It's good that he quickly agreed and we need to make sure that he does the main job. And Grandpa, straightening his hair, said that Meng would be his first assistant and his granddaughter the second. And they all got to work. Grandpa wanted to say number three, but Meng Kao beat him to it, giving him the hilt number four with a diamond blade number seven. Meng Kao looked at him and said that he knew that he wanted to use blade number twelve with hilt number three to separate the lung book. But if you look at it, you can see leaf-shaped folds on his lung book. They are very fragile and if he hurries, he can ruin the appearance. And he suggested that he start from the beginning with the vessels behind the pulmonary book. Disconnect the circulatory system, clean up the neighborhood and only then proceed to the pulmonary book. And he added that the neighbors have become stronger than before. It will not be easy to tear them apart. And I asked Grandpa Ning what he thought. And he looked at him and said that was exactly what he thought. A spark appeared in front of Meng Kao. It said that for helping the elite citizen Ningxi to learn about the structure of the seven-eyed dragon wolf spider and increase his knowledge, Meng Kao received 15 contribution points. Meng Kao's eyes flashed and he thought, at his expense, he just has to feed pretty. After some time, he could collect valuable materials in banks. Grandpa thought that harvesting crops with Meng Kao as an assistant turned out to be very convenient, and maybe it's worth teaching him the techniques of the seven guan solutions. Grandpa asked him what he would do in his place. Meng Kao, while moving his hand with a long scalpel, began to cover his hand with blue rays, replied to him that he would move from the bottom to the center using the third solution of the seven guan solutions. Grandpa was very surprised. Inside himself, he thought that someone behind this young man was able to perfect the seven guan solutions. With the help of such a technique, it would be possible to reduce the harvest time by at least 5%, and he wondered who he was, who his teacher was, what forces and researchers were behind him. The spark plate appeared in front of Meng Kao again. It is reported that thanks to him, the elite citizen Ningxi further deepened his knowledge of the seven guan solutions for which he received plus 50 contribution points. Meng Kao noted that the elite's ability to learn is high because he just showed a couple of movements and he immediately understood everything. Grandpa looked at him and said that he had taught him the secret technique so easily. And I wanted to ask about his mentors. Meng Kao understood that he was an elite and now he would not be able to get away with words about self-education and quickly apologizing, saying that he had his own reasons for not being able to tell him about his teachings. But he added that his teacher said that knowledge must be disseminated in order to elevate Longcheng and in no case should it be selfishly hidden. From his words, Ning pouted, saying that he also asked for 300,000 from him. Meng Kao sighed and said that he was not familiar with them and she misunderstood him. These 300,000 will be his initial capital so that he can form his team and achieve his goals for contributing to the development of the city. Meng Kao did not need money for personal purposes, but only to kindle the fire of earthly civilization in this other world. Grandpa Ning was greatly surprised by such a statement. After all, he said these words with burning eyes, is Meng Kao really trying to contribute to Longcheng? So young but with such a soul. 
and his granddaughter was very embarrassed by her words, because she did not think that he had such aspirations, and she doubted him. Meng Kao said that he should finish his work faster and not waste time talking. There was the last bag of poison left. He said he would hold it and Grandpa Ning would disconnect the nerve cord. And I thought that I should finish it as soon as possible before my father finished his work. And they were able to take what they needed. The grandfather asked his granddaughter Zushi how much money they had in their account. She replied that it was about 800,000. He told her to transfer all the money to Zio Meng. The girl was no less confused than Meng Kao. He said something too much because they agreed on 500,000. Grandpa smiled and said that because of his illness, there was not much money in the account. But this technique that Meng Kao showed was worth more than a couple hundred thousand. And I told him to wait until he sells the materials and then they will talk in more detail. Meng Kao said it would be an honor for him. And to be honest, he has some research on the other six solutions from the seven Guan solution. And he added that according to his observations, grandfather would need about another year and a half to recover from the injury. And he asked to continue their conversation sometime later. Grandpa Ning was surprised how he knew exactly where his injury was. Meng Kao said that judging by his hands, he thought it was the poison of the purple royal viper. It struck the ulnar nerves of both hands, the radial nerve and the median, and maybe even a part of the optic nerve. Here, Zushi cried out with tears in her eyes, since he could see his grandfather's injuries. How could he say that he would be able to recover in a year and a half? Obviously. This is an incurable disease. Meng Kao was in a misunderstanding after hearing this. Zushi asked with hope in her eyes if he could cure her grandfather. Then a spark sign appeared in front of Meng Kao. There he asked whether to start the first treatment task. Time to complete. One month. Reward for the task. The reward will depend on the degree of healing of Ningxi. And it will be from 200 to 2000 pieces of contribution. Meng Kao chose to start. And he warned them, saying that he would try. But it was the venom of an unknown snake it would not be easy. It is possible that you will only be able to find random ideas. Grandpa said good-naturedly that it was not bad either. After all, now doctors have no treatment ideas at all. And I thought that for sure Meng would have to ask his teacher for him. And I thought how to thank him for that. And then an idea came to him. He said that he remembered that he wanted to open his own resource processing company. Would he like to sign a harvest agreement with the Thunder Squad? Meng Kao thought that in the squad like Thunder where the Exalted are, even crumbs will be enough for them to have enough for a lifetime. Meng Kao said that he should thank him for his kindness, but the bags of poison are not durable and other materials also need to be worked out, and he suggested that he deal with it first. Then he would find Meng Kao on Wufu Street and they would discuss everything. Grandpa Ning agreed, and then Meng Kao received a notification on the transfer of 800,000 yuan on his phone. He waved goodbye to them and ran to the base. Grandpa said that this guy is not so simple and asked his granddaughter to make friends with him. Meng Kao happily ran to the base thinking about how glad his father would be when he saw his bank account dot and when he approached the building, loud voices and screams could be heard there. The director shouted at Meng Kao's father about money. He shouted that 280,000 yuan for the purchase of a spherical nerve is a penny. Meng Kao approached one of the workers and asked what was going on. He replied that his father had contacted Shen Zhongfa and wanted to negotiate the purchase of a globular nerve. A few moments ago. Meng Cha's father informed Director Sheng that they had just opened the Golden Ghost. When he heard him, he shouted, Is it possible for him to open the Golden Pupils? If they broke something there, then Uncle Hu will destroy them. Meng Kao's father informed all the workers that he was going to take the globular nerve to Brother Shen. And everyone started asking questions. One of them asked him if he was going to buy him back from Shen Zhongfa. Another of them added that not only would he not give him an employee discount, but he might also crash. And even if he gives him a discount, he doesn't have any money. Holding the jar tightly in his hands, he said that this was his son's only hope of going to university. The director hit the table with his hand and shouted that he was carrying it all. Meng Kao's father wanted to say something, saying that it wasn't him. But the director hit him on the head, saying if it wasn't him, then who? And he started yelling that he had thrown the thing himself, and a Zion and a Bao had helped him frame him. Meng Kao ran up to him and helped him stand up. And squatting down, he carefully began to see who had broken the jar with the globular nerve. And he saw the fat on the fragments and realized that because of her, this director could not hold the jar. And getting up, he turned to Shen, saying since it was not clear to him who exactly broke this flask, he said that they were ready to compensate half the cost in accordance with the rules. The director grinned nastily and said that it was at least 100,000 yuan and mockingly said that the kid obviously said without thinking. His face was covered in crumbs of food and he looked ugly himself. The director told Kao's father that he wanted to take the material for himself and then broke it and now refuses to take responsibility. And he slapped him on the neck and said that if someone from his circles found out about it, then no one would contact him. Kao's father was scared and said that he would buy everything back. 
The director smiled nastily and said that he agreed to what he was buying. And I handed him a three-year second-tier contract so that he would sign it. And he can pick up this thing tomorrow. And he began to laugh loudly and ugly. The director told him to sign the contract for another two years and he would give him 100000 in advance. He will buy materials for his son. Maybe he can even pass the exams. The father said he would sign and just wanted to pull his hand to the contract. Meng Kao rushed to them and threw the contract away from his father, flashing his yellow eyes angrily. He told him not to even hope. 